dark skin here with me. This ain't a diss song, but um, yeah, uh huh, you know what it is. I'm a cheesehead, y'all niggas cheese whiz. Pittsburgh Steelers, that's nothing. That Super Bowl ring, that's nothing. Pull up in your town. Yeah. Last year, you were special teams coordinator for Vanderbilt, but for seven years prior to that, you were special teams coach for the Cleveland Browns. Now, I can remember as a player, we used to watch a lot of Cleveland Browns film as a baseline for how to play special teams in the NFL. What do you take from that experience as special teams coach for that pretty solid Cleveland Browns special team and working with Coach Chris Tabor? Really, our system is, it's very similar. I mean, and he's like a brother to me in coaching, as I mentioned in the first press conference. I mean, I know that doesn't go over well you know, here in Green Bay with him being in, in Chicago and stuff, but you know, it's it all springs from really the Scotty O'Brien, John Harbaugh, Dave Tobe, who's now in Kansas City and was in Chicago before that. It's we all come from the same kind of special teams tree, I guess you would call it. And so the baseline of what we do and what we did in Cleveland and stuff. So you know, we kind of tweaked some things and tried to add some things over since I was there and you know, based on what we can do with our personnel. But you know, the, the system's very, very similar to what we did there. Now you said Dave Tobe, and, and he's highly regarded around the NFL as one of the best. What makes his approach, uh, Chris Tabor's approach, your approach different from some other approaches that we may have seen in the past? I think just the way we try to develop players from the time they you know come in phase one, there's you know, a very specific plan. And I know every special teams coordinator does, but I think just the, really the emphasis on the techniques and, and things that are going to apply and try to tailor those to what our what our personnel allow us to do. And, there's enough flexibility in the system we have with our coverage schemes and with our return schemes to be able to pick and say, okay, here's what our returner likes to do, here's what our front that blocks is best at doing, and then we can able to kind of tailor that and have enough flexibility in the system to be able to, to try to you know, accentuate our strengths and, and expose the weaknesses of our opponent. Is there a challenge in trying to create chemistry with a mostly new coaching staff and a lot of new younger players on this roster coming in with your new scheme? The staff has been great. I mean, it starts with, with Matt at the top, you know, really emphasizing special teams. And we have a lot of coaches, not just, you know, Maurice Drayton's our special teams assistant. We were able to, you know, retain him. And then uh, Renee Stewart we brought in as our quality control. So there's three of us working there. So you know, we've devoted the resources to that, but they're just within our other coaches. You know, Jason Simmons has been a former special teams assistant and coaching DB. So, you know, Kirk Olivadotti and, and, and Ben Sermons. So we use a lot of coaches on staff who have special teams experience. And it helps because those guys really emphasize special teams in their meeting rooms and the importance of it. And then just having a young unit. I think those guys are hungry and there's talent here and I'm excited about it. It's kind of been exciting through the spring watching that chemistry start to develop. You know, just building a culture here where special teams you know, continues to be important to help us win games and I think we're on the right road to do that. Now you've worked with some pretty exceptional uh, special teams players, some Pro Bowl players. What is it that makes a good special teams player and what makes a good special teams unit? Players taking pride in their job. I mean, they, they know that that's an important third of the game and they, they like playing on special teams and, you know, they play hard and they study their opponent and they study, you know, what we're doing on our schemes. They know exactly what they're supposed to do from the time they step on the field and they go out and they take pride in executing and trying to dominate their man. And, you know, we always talk about do your 111th. If we get 11 guys doing your 111th, we're going to have a good play and stuff. So I think it takes pride in doing your job and just being a good pro. And then if guys take pride in themselves in doing their job, then pretty soon the unit starts taking pride in that. And, you know, you just build that culture where hopefully we can keep developing, get some guys that are older players. As they, as they get more seasoned and you, you start bringing in some rookies and bottom of the third roster guys, the older guys take care of it in the locker room and say, that's not how we do it here. You know, if you have a bad practice, obviously we're going to get on them as coaches, but you start getting older veteran players getting on the younger guys and saying, that's not acceptable. This is, what, this is the way we do it. It just kind of sets the tone for everybody. I just love my team. Yeah, that's the team with them big G's on the helmet.